What's going on everybody? Today I've got one of the most exciting videos that I've had planned for a little while. Myself along with Brett McAfee from the channel Skull and Spade are going to be in his forge and I'm going to try blacksmithing for the first time. And together we're going to make five of these single edge blades known as a kiridashi. So let's go ahead and get started on Modern Builds. The steel for our knives began its life as leaf springs, which are a critical part of most trucks suspensions. Conveniently, they're made of tool steel and are regularly used to forge with. I was surprised to find that the only thing holding these leaf springs together were a couple of bolts and clips. So I loaded up the angle grinder with a cutting wheel and I freed everything up. Earlier, we made this mock-up of the kiridashi shape that I wanted to go for, and we used that to know what size blanks we needed to cut. After cutting each section, I threw them back into the vise, and I split them right down the center. That way I got two blanks out of each piece. Oftentimes, people will buy prepared knife blanks, that way they don't have to go through this whole process, but it was really cool for me to learn, and I love the idea of recycling old material. So next, we pulled out Brett's propane forge so that we could heat them up in a process called annealing. So when we talk about annealing, what we're really doing is softening the steel because it's been hardened and tempered at this point. By raising it up to a really high heat, we're gonna get all the molecules dancing again, and then we're gonna slowly bring the temperature down by cooling it off. That way we can work with it. Typically, you'd use something like vermiculite or even wood ash can work, but we got an abundance of sand, so we're gonna build a little pile of it stick our stock in there. We're going old school. While we gave the knife blank some time to cool down in the sand, Brett ran me through his hammer selection and we chose the best all around one for me to learn on. So if you swing with a tight wrist or you, you're trying to control it with your wrist and just swing pivoting here, in about five minutes, you'll be done. Got it. You won't be forging anymore. Oh, that just, forearm's gonna die. It's just too much. You'll start to feel it all up in here, and you'll be done. So the most important thing is that loose wrist, and you're focusing on swinging with your shoulder. We're gonna have you okay. practice on the piece of steel, and you'll get a sense of it real quick. Let's do it. As a responsible teacher, Brett instructed me to take this half-inch steel rod down to a taper, basically turning it into a steel spike. Doing this helped give me a feel for what the steel would do whenever I hit it with the hammer and how it would react before we risked it going all in on the knife blanks. Now we're gonna finesse it. One of the first lessons I learned was being accurate was way better than being powerful. Dude, look at you. Is this 1-800 Super Pro or what? Get close. It was also a little weird having a working time. Basically, you could only hit the steel for as long as it was hot. It was like having a shot clock in basketball. As long as I didn't think about the timer, it wasn't a big deal, but it definitely made everything a little more stressful at times. We did it! We did it! Okay, so we have successfully made a taper. Have yeah. I passed your test? Uh, 75%. I'll take it. That's yeah, a C. It's a high C. I mean, that's a passing grade. All right, so what's next? We're gonna do this for real now. Uh, we're gonna give it a shot, yeah. You're ready. Don't you. think you are. Yeah. Know you are. Mind blown. So we've already cut out a master, so we're gonna use it as a template while we're forging. That way we've got something to work towards. So by now our knife planks had had a couple of hours to cool down and I threw them back into the forge to get them to a working temperature of over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, moment of truth. This is the real deal. We've got our first knife, knife blank. I'm gonna start flattening it out a little bit. And then we're gonna work the spine. What you see me doing is hitting the front corner of our knife blank and that's gonna start making the knife blade. Any advice? Only the corner. Don't hit anything else. And you're off the anvil. Way off oh, the anvil. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, so we're gonna true up. Play it flat. Flat. Grab it. 
So round one was far from a success, but I learned it was easy to get the knife blank flat, and I understand the principles of what it takes to get that corner down to start the blade. So we threw it back into the forge, and it was time for round two. All right, that's all right. Let's get to it. Okay, so just like last time, hitting on the corner? Yep, at an angle. Now flat, and work that back down to flat. You got it. Yep. Right here? Yeah, dude, that's it. That's your process right now. Easy. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I was swinging hard. You're right. Doing good. One more? Uh, yeah. All right, now flat. Just flat, nothing else. Give it a good whack. Most beautiful, we'll go back in. There it is, there it's all coming off. That is great. Okay, same as last time, about right yeah. here. Like two good hits. Bah, bah, flat. Really work on that flat because it's all wonky right now. All that tip. Whoop. Now flat. Focus on the tip, just the tip. That's what she said, right? So we're getting closer, as you can tell. Um, this is gonna be the blade edge, and we're just working to get it to a point. Brett made this earlier, and as you can tell, we're starting to get there. It's not anything great, but we got a few more rounds to go. Yep. Flat. Nope, flat. Better? Where your fat part is? Right here? Yep. Keep going. It's just fighting you right now. It's just getting cold. Check your piece. Mike. Feeling okay? Yeah. So now that I understand the process of what I'm doing, I can thin out my knife blank and draw the edge back a little bit further. Okay, so I'm smooshing out now, yeah? I wanted the material to taper with the edge of the blade, so I had quite a bit of material to move around. The original blanks were pretty thick, but I was able to squish it down pretty well. All right, check it. Dude, my man, my man. We're getting there, right? So the next thing we need to establish is just our little finger inlet. We're gonna be using the back side of this cross beam because it's almost the exact shape that we need. So by striking here with this spine against the anvil, it'll give us a little finger groove. Just like that right there. So I'm gonna hold it like this, and I'm just hitting it. Just a good clean strike. Okay, here we go. Easy. It's better if you go slow. Yeah. After I got the butt end of the knife shaped into a handle the way I wanted to, we pulled out this really cool tool called a flatter, which does what the name implies. Uh, Essentially, it's got a large, broad head with a lot of surface area that can flatten out your piece as a good final step to help refine everything. Oh, that's flat. Woo! Brett, 
We are killing it. Boom. You see that? Such a small thing. Woo! Modern builds. You can see him? Yep. All right, let's get the close up. Oh! Brett, that's so awesome. Yeah! That's pretty good, my brother. What's next? We will be cleaning them up a little bit and then hardening them. Let's do it. But before we can do that, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, why not build it yourself? That's sort of what Modern Builds is all about. And with Squarespace, you can get a designer level website with zero website building experience. Squarespace's built-in designer templates look incredible right out of the gate. All you need to be able to do is drag and drop text blocks and upload images, and you are well on your way to a one-of-a-kind website. Squarespace's websites are optimized to look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile. That way your customers get the best experience no matter where they find you. Whether you're interested in a creative portfolio, an online store, or just a simple domain, Squarespace has it all. Plus, if you follow the link down in my description, that's squarespace.com forward slash modern builds, you can build out your entire Squarespace site without entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your new website live, don't forget to use the code modern builds at checkout for 10% off your first site. Now back to the project. Hardening the steel does just what the name implies also. Essentially, we heat the steel up to about 2000 degrees and then rapidly cool it in a process called quenching in oil. It didn't break. And that's a good thing. That is a very good thing. And after Brett showed me the ropes, nope, I tried nope, my hand nope. at quenching one of the blades in this can of vegetable oil also. There go. Full it worked! And at this point in the night, we had five handmade kiridashis that were hardened and ready to be tempered. But first, I wanted to clean up and expose the logos on the knife edges a little bit better. I just used a flap disc on the angle grinder, but this worked perfectly. I didn't want any kind of high shine. I just wanted to make this a little bit nicer looking while maintaining that hand forged texture. Finally, we tempered our blades by putting them in a toaster oven at 300 degrees for two hours. This makes the steel less brittle and helps the knives retain a stronger edge. After that, Brett could put a edge on the blades and I just trusted him to do that process. And with that, our five kiridashis are complete. So these five knives are exactly what I was hoping for and I think they look so cool. I love the fact that they're just a single piece of steel and they have a single edge blade, just like a chisel. You really can't beat that hand forged texture and blacksmithing is the only way to get it, which is really cool. So as you might imagine, I looked up a lot of different kiridashi shapes online before I built the ones that I did. And even though there's some really cool shapes out there, I love the ones that me and Brett created. One more huge thanks to Brett again. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching. I know this video was a little bit out of the box. Make sure and follow Brett on his channel, Skull and Spade, YouTube, Instagram, everywhere. If you're not already, click subscribe to me, Modern Builds, and hit that bell. That way you stay updated every time I post new videos. Absolutely. Thanks a ton, everybody, and we will see you next time on Modern Builds. You nailed it.